Jeshwaraji. Jeshwaraji. So we wanted to know that uh, how did you came to Sahaja Yoga and which year you, you know, started practicing Sahaja Yoga? So my name is Chris Kiriaku. Uh, I'm from Sydney. I came to Sahaja Yoga in 1983, so over 30 years. The way I came was my brother was a very strong seeker. I was not a strong seeker. So my brother came to Sahaja Yoga first. Then he came home and said, you, know, you must come, you must come, you must come. And I'm saying, I'm young, I'm 25, I'm enjoying life, I've got my friends, going to parties, all this life. Why do I want to become a monk or a Brahmin? I want to enjoy life. When I'm 50, then I'll come to Sajjaga. He said, okay. He said, Shimonaji's in Sydney. Please drive me to the program. I said, okay, your brother, I can drive you to the program. So we drive to the program, and the place where the program is being held is in the middle of a big centre of Sydney. No traffic, never possibly parking. As we drive there, the car pulls out right from in front of the theatre, right in front. The brother goes, look, spot right there, it's, it's, it's good luck. So I pull in, and then says, come inside. I said, I'm only driver. He said, one hour, and then you go back home. So I go, fine. So I sit, go inside. I sit down. Very soon, Shimonaji arrives. Everyone says, please stand up, because Shimonaji has arrived. Everybody stands up. I sit down. So I said, I'm driver. I'm not seeker. I'm not here for the program. I'm just driving my brother. So I'm not sitting like this. Everyone's standing up. And I'm sitting there. And I get this feeling, you know, when someone's watching you, and you get this tingling feeling. I very, very strong. And then I turn, and as Shimanaji walked into the hall, she stopped at the aisle where I was, and she's looking down, smiling at me. And all of a sudden, I actually felt like someone grabbed me from the back of the collar and pulled me out of the chair. And I was jumping up the chair, and then I felt this huge energy coming up and out of my head. And like everything became light and bright and I was standing and then everyone sat down and I was still standing up like shocked. And my brother's pulling my shirt saying, sit down, sit down. And I sat down and my brother put his hand over my head and said, wow, he said, very strong. You've got it. And then I said, after the program, I said to my brother, I said, I'm very sad. He goes, why are you sad? You should be very happy. He said, I'm sad because I know all my life up until that point was illusion. And this is the only reality. And I was sad because that life I knew at that moment had ended. And some new life was starting, which I was uncertain of. But I said, this is the truth. Whatever it is, I'm here now. I have to make it work. So that was the start. Second question too is, your any memorable experience with Shimataji? Wow. Well, um, I've, I've been very lucky. I've had various, various roles in Sajoga. I was the coordinator for a number of years. So it's difficult to say one particular thing. I've been very fortunate a few times to wash Shimataji's feet. So it was in the early days. And when you do this experience, and your hands are washing God's feet. He said, the Sarastra is totally open. You cannot think. It's not like you are thinking. It's impossible to think. Sorry. sorry. Can I get a photograph? Sorry, sorry. Second question, we continue. Any memorable experience with Shumatiji? So, as I was saying, this particular occasion when I was watching Shumatiji's feet, it's timeless. It's cosmic. Time stops. So the whole universe stops. You can't think. You have no emotion. You have no desire. You're in a totally different space. And I felt the same experience in Noida Pradhan when the, the tool went to there. And my reasoning is that we've been touring now for seven years. We tour twice a year. And for those seven years, we believe that we're serving Shimanaji. So when we went to Noida Pradhan, it's like Noida Pradhan is heaven and Noida is the earth, and the two places overlap. And when you're in this top room, it's like heaven and the earth are in the same space. If you go into that space and you're pleasing to Shimataji, and we think this work that we're doing is pleasing to her, and then when we offered the Aarti, it actually felt the same as that time watching her feet. The Sarastra felt totally open. You could feel the Kundalini going around the Sarastra. You could feel the Sarastra of the other yogis in the room, and you could feel the Kundalini's like this. And to me, it was like Shimaji saying, 
I'm happy with you. I'm happy with the work. I'm happy with the chores. This is pleasing to me. And she's saying, have the darshan, have the grace, have the blessings. But take these blessings out into the world. It's not for you. It's only so you can be my instrument, you can follow my will, you can follow my word, and you can do my word. And to do that, have my blessings. This is what I felt. And then the next period after the tour, when we're going around, I felt those blessings would be going out to the audience. So the real thing about the memorable experiences that you have, Shimonji doesn't give these for you. She gives these so you can share with other people, that you can be a better instrument for her, and that you become a better yogi. Because one very important thing is one day, we will all stand in front of Shimonji again. And Shimonji will look down and she'll say, what did you do? Because I gave you self-realization, I gave you a brain, I gave you talent, I gave you all the things that you treasure in life. What did you do with all that to serve me? What did you do to make the world a better place? What did you do to propagate Sai Yoga? So every day from now until that time, best prepare for that meeting. Because when you face the Almighty, you need to have a story to say of what I've done. And it's not enough to say I was a Sai Yogi and I went to programs and I meditated. All the yogis are doing that. You have to take it to the next level. What are you doing to realize the vision? And what I'm trying to do every day is prepare for that day. So we go for the third question. Any specific teaching of Shimadaji, you know, which you follow and you want to you know, yeah. share with us? In my, in my view, there are three major aspects of the Sahaj Yoga. Number one is the personal ascent. It's Futsaki. It's clearing. It's going to the collective. It's doing all the things that you do for your personal ascent. So you, your instrument becomes clear and you become closer to Shimanaji. That's number one. Number two, you must do her work. It's not enough to clear, it's not enough to meditate. You must do her work. If you're not doing her work, it's one aspect of your devotion to her that's missing. And the third is, is the, the bhakti, the worship, the puja, the love you give to energy. All three things are needed, all three things are needed in balance. You cannot do one or two or three, you must do all three. So some people are great bhaktas, but they do no work and they don't clear themselves. Other people clear day and night, but they don't do the work. Unless you do all three, you're not fulfilling your vision of the So Fourth question, how was the MLG India Tour experience? The MLG Tour experience, for me, I went on the early tours with Shimadaji in the 80s when we toured Maharashtra. And we went six weeks and we went with the yogis and everyone talks about how these were the most important spiritual experiences of their life. To me this tour was no different to those old tours. We had people from all over the world. We were going to these sacred sites but even better sites. We weren't going to set the Shringi or Arangabad or Arangjurja Caves or Laura Caves, these physical sites. We're going to Shimaji sites where she lived, where she's born, where she took Samadhi. These, these are the real holy sites. These other places are nothing compared to these places. So one, we did a spiritual pilgrimage through the most sacred sites in the world. We were doing her programs at the same time and we were being collective at the same time. So there's three aspects of Sai Jago I spoke about, we're all being fulfilled as part of this tour. So I actually felt Shimadaji was there every step with us. You could almost sense her presence on the bus with us, at the programs with us, at the pujas with us. You know, when we're going to the Nagal, when we're going to Chinwara, when we're going to Janbur in the procession, and we're in the bullock cart, it always felt, and talking about it now, my Kundalini is coming out. It's like she was there with us. So the most memorable experience about the tour is you see Shimadaji's power at work in the world. It's not a concept, it's not words on a page, it's not looking at a photo. She's real, she's there, and her power fills the world with love. That's my experience. So we want to the last question. Any suggestions for Indian yogis? Like, what do you think? The same message for Indian yogis is for all yogis of the world. No division. Love each other. Work together. We're one family. There's no India, there's no Australia, there's no Russia, Germany, China. It's just tags that humanity puts on us. Inside Yoga we say we're one family 
on this tour, we felt that as a reality, not some concept. So the most important thing is what I'm seeing in New Agam and Nilesh and Swapnil is they dedicate themselves to the work, they dedicate themselves to serving yogis, and they dedicate themselves to their personal ascent. If yogis take what you're doing and do it across India, the whole world will be a change. And what I'm waiting for is that these young yogis raise up and take over Sahaja Yoga because that day Sahaja Yoga will go to the next level and us can retire and watch you do the great things. Any feedback or suggestions sir, wherein the next time we can improve on or maybe we can implement some things? Nothing can be improved. The whole thing was perfection. All we need to do is commit to this work and continue on. So we don't think we did a great tour, we sit back at home, you know, we think we're very good ourselves and think the job's done. That's not the way. This job goes and goes and goes. Look at Uncle Juan on the tour, 78, still touring, still getting on the stage, still singing, still doing stage work at that age. He's not saying, I'm retiring, I've come to the end of my work. He's full of that energy of Shimadaji, which keeps him going. And you see him picking his bag up and taking on the bus. You see him taking care of his, never once did he ask for help, never once did he say it's too hard, never once did he say give me help, never. So he's full of that energy, so he's an example to us that this will never stop. So we have to stay committed for the rest of our lives to make this well because one important thing, the forces of evil work 24 by 7. You look at the TV, this country, that country, this explosion, this terrorism, they never rest. Everywhere in the world they're at work 24 by 7. What are the yogis doing? Are we operating 24 by 7 in all the countries? Are we working as hard as these negative people are? We're not. But if we all get invigorated and energised and we continue this work, then we can counter this negativity in the world. It can only happen if all the yogis who are watching this commit to saying, I'm going to make a difference, I'm going to take up this work, I'm going to make this world a better place. Then everything can change. And people can be like you and swapping and Alesh, it will happen. Last question. Uh, any suggestions or any, uh, anything you want to say for Indian Yuva Shakti? Indian Yuva Shakti, I bow to you. Everyone I've met on the tour are fabulous Sahaja Yogis. They're inspiring and the most important thing is they give us older Yogis great hope. Hope for the future because we won't be here forever and, and Sahaja Yoga will be in your hands. So the only thing I can say is don't change. Keep your enthusiasm, keep your brotherly love with each other, keep your energy, your passion for Sahaja Yoga because it inspires us. Don't change anything but just go to the next level, come together as a collective, work together, Forget any of these differences that are in the world, they're nothing, it's illusion. They all go away. Just go on the ground, do the work. Shimanaji is pleased by this. All the other things she has no attention on. Just concentrate on this work, love each other, and continue to work this way. Thank you,